Welcome to Feminine Roadmap Podcast. I'm your host, Gina Farrar. Each week, I bring you an inspiring conversation to help you navigate the challenges and changes of midlife so that you can not only survive, but thrive in your second half. Hello, Feminine Roadmappers. It is Gina here, and today we are going to be talking about an ageless life. We're going to be talking about how age is just a number. There's so much life you have left to live, so many things you have left to explore and do. And my guest today is Arlene Krantz. Arlene Krantz has been a wife, a mother, a businesswoman, an author. She's soon to be a YouTube creator. She is a powerhouse of a woman, and she's going to be sharing how she has been navigating the second half of her life in a way that feels good and vibrant and productive. So Arlene, I want to thank you so much for being on the show today. Oh, I am so happy to be here, Gina. Thank you for asking me. I'm thrilled. Arlene and I met through a good friend of ours, Eldona Fernandez, and she just thought, hey, you two should get together. And that is part of this journey I'm finding, Arlene, in the second half of life especially. I feel like the first half of our life, we're like raising our family, we're building our business, we're so kind of externally focused. But when we get to this season, I have found that community and connection through community has been a huge part of navigating what's next. Would you agree? Yes, I mean, we're all reaching out to each other, looking for support. We want support to know that we're not the only one in this journey, especially at our time of our life, to know that, we, you know, we, like you said, we raised our children. I have two daughters. I have seven grandkids. I'm a happy mom. I'm a, I'm, I love my grandkids, my kids are dead. But it was like, where was I going to go in my life? And when was this going to happen? When was I going to be that woman that we have my freedom to, to even allow myself to do it. So we need to know that. Every time I talk about my story, other women say, oh my God, I had the same thing happen to me. You know, from, from wanting to taking a bottle of pills when I was 22 years old to end my life. And women have said, believe me, I have done, I have thought of it. And I even tried it once to being at my age, which is now 80 years old, which I'm announcing to the world, which, I, which is a big thing for me to do. And, and like, you know, every time I do something, my sisters will say, you know, take it easy, take it easy. I said, look, I'm not dead. I am not dead. I've got years to go yet. My life is not over. I have so much to accomplish and the things that I've been put here on this earth to do. And I don't want it to be on my tombstone, on my stone to say she didn't do what she wanted in her life. I don't want that to happen. And there's this, uh, the seven, uh, seven things that people regret in their life. And the number one was that they didn't do what they wanted and they listened to everybody else. And I have to say is we as women listen to everybody around us because growing up, we've been taught to please everybody, please our parents, please the teachers, please our friends. And then it's like, well, who the hell are we? <laughs> who are we? And that's been my journey from the time, you know, from the time I realized I really needed to find out who I was, that's been my journey all these years. And it continues. It doesn't stop. Every day, it's like, who am I? Every day, I discover something new about myself. It's like, wow, look what's, look what's going on in my life, how exciting it is. I'm happy to share my, the things that happened to me that make, gave me aha moments. Why don't you share a little bit of your story so that people kind of know who you are, what brought you to this place? Well, uh, even though we're starting midlife, I need my story starts when I was raising my two kids and I realized it's like, okay, I'm a mom. I love my kids, but there's got to be something else in life for me. And I would sit there, we'd sit in the courtyard and we'd all talk about what we're feeding our kids, what we're dressing them, what we're doing, all this stuff. And I would say, oh my God, there's got to be something else. And I would look at 60 Minutes. I would get Time and Newsweek magazine. So my world was not just about being a housewife and mother, which is the role I was put into. Because as we women know that are our ages, our whole life is, you know, I wanted to be a nurse. And my mother said, you're only going to get married and have kids. So that was the end of that career. 
So it's all these things that led up to freedom to do what I wanted to do for me and to explore all these years. Who am I? I mean, every day I wake up and I'm like, oh, who am I today? You know, what, what am I adding to my life to make my life better and to be who I want to be and not to be for everybody else? And it's been an interesting journey. My husband said, we're moving to Africa. I said, okay, what do I know? I'm the happy, I'm the good wife. Whatever they said, I did. I went with my two kids. It was, a, it was an interesting experience, but moved back to Philadelphia because we're from Philadelphia originally. And I needed a job. And I hadn't worked since I got married. For, well, I hadn't worked for like about 15 years. And I go and I call up a friend at, that has a job. I said, hey, could you hire me for something? I need to get a job. And the first paycheck I got with my name on it was like the biggest aha moment. Because people say to me, what was your aha moments? And that was a big one for me. It's like, wow, I can work and I can make my own money and I don't have to be dependent on my husband or anybody else to give me money. And money was a big issue. You know, it was always whatever he gave me, I had to deal with. We didn't have money. I would make up envelopes and write down one was for rent, one was for for the, the gas for the car, one was for clothes, one was for the butcher, whatever. So I was the one that was the person that was doing this and he was out there making money sometimes, sometimes not. I got a job in San Francisco working in retail and it was like, oh my God, I love this. I was like a natural boy. I mean, I had two kids moving to San Francisco. I was 40 years old. I'm like, okay, I got to get a job in San Francisco now, leaving that little job in Philadelphia. And I talked my way into a job because I didn't really didn't have experience, but I knew I could do it. I didn't care. You know, I was bold and I was brave. And, and I said to my boss, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. And she says, okay, you're hired. Cause she didn't want to have to take care of all those little things. So from that I was in, and I worked in retail. I worked in, I, and I magnet. I don't know if anybody remembers that. It's a department store similar to what Neiman Marcus is, but they went out of business years ago. And then riding in a bus with one of the women and a buyer. And she said, I need an assistant buyer. And I said, well, I'll go do that. I could do that. So I've, there's something that has always been inside of me. There's always a fire or something inside of me that said, I mean, you can do anything you want. Just say yes. Now, sometimes it's not easy. And all those little voices come back. Oh, you're Arlene, you know, you, you were a housewife. Who do you think you are? You know, all those little voices that sit on your shoulder and talk in your ear that tell you, that, who do you think you are? You'll never make money. You'll never do anything. You know, stay where you are, get a job. And it's like, but there was something inside of me that said, there's something more for me. I didn't, I was not happy. I didn't want to work for anybody. But for my magnet, I went to Macy's. I moved over into Macy's, making the path to become a buyer. And I was one step to buyer. They promised me that I would be in this particular job in San Francisco store. I'm a city girl. I grew up in Philadelphia. I'm a total city girl. Country is not for me. So here they put me in a little branch that was so out of my, just, I just didn't belong there. And it was miserable for me. And then finally I left and I realized that there's something better for me out there. I can't, I don't want to work for anybody. But at the same time, I've always worked for somebody. I saw myself, I used to have dreams that I would sit in a desk, this big desk on a corner office with windows around me. You know, I saw my, I had dreams that I was in Amazon and I was sitting in a throne with lions and tigers next to me. You know, these, these dreams, and I guess that's where my strength is from, these dreams, saying that I knew I had something, and it, but I was still exploring what that was. So I quit that job, and I'm looking for a new job, and I hear on the radio about a business, and I'm like, huh, I could do that. I had no money. I was on unemployment. I was eating popcorn for dinner. That's all I could afford. I would invite friends over for spaghetti because I couldn't afford the meatballs. You know, it was spaghetti and, and pasta. That was it. 
you know, I had uh, separated from my husband. I got a divorce when we were married 19 years. And I went to live on my own for the very first time. I had never even gone to a restaurant by myself. I had never gone to a movie by myself. And here I am, 40 years old, not knowing, between 40 and 45, experiencing, getting off a bus from my job and making a reservation at a restaurant and being, I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to go by myself to go eat at this restaurant. What am I going to do when I'm in there? So I took a book, I took a newspaper, so I wouldn't feel funny, you know, even going to a movie, walking in a movie by myself. And these are some of the things that women, it's something we don't even think about, but that I had to experience. Getting off that bus and standing there and saying, oh my God, am I really going to go do this? Come on, Arlene, you're brave. Just go do it. Just make that little walk from the bus stop over to the restaurant. And I did it and I was proud of myself. So all these years I've been kind of, who am I? So when I started this business, I had no money. I borrowed money. I got credit cards. I'm that typical story about getting credit cards and borrowing money. I go up to somebody and say, Hey, Gina, could you lend me $2,000? You know, and I'd write out this note. I had no idea what I was doing, but I did it anyhow. I wrote out this note and I would say, I will pay you back. If I don't have the principal at the end of one year, I will pay you the interest. And I was giving them 20% interest. And people would say to me, what are you crazy giving 20% interest? I'm like, I didn't care. I wanted the money. The interest didn't matter. I was willing to pay that just to get the money because I needed that money to start the business. And that business became from zero. Again, I had I found a boyfriend was helping me pay rent. Again, I had no money. And I took that business to a multi-million dollar business. And I did it through perseverance and strength. And there were days that I would sit at my little two, my two bedroom apartment in San Francisco on a fourth floor walk up And those days, I was paying $350 a month. So now I'm sure that apartment's probably $5,000 a month. But in those days, it was $350 a month, and sometimes I didn't have that. And my boyfriend would help me pay for it, or I put it on a credit card. So when I started the business, I was like, I went and I formed a corporation. I read a book on how to do it. I went to an attorney. He helped me. He didn't really help me that much. And I think a lot of that is because I was a woman, you know, that figured, oh, this isn't going to go anywhere. So I'll just give her general stuff. And I'm sure that's what it was. Because if I look back at that, how he formed, how he helped me, it was like, oh my God, really? And what did I know? I didn't know, but I knew I needed to be a corporation. So I just kept going and going. And some days I would wake up and I'd say, here I am by myself for the first time in my life. I, th- I probably was between, yeah, about 45. Here I am starting a business, trying to figure it all out. I just did it. I just, whatever needed to be done, I just did it. And everybody told me, all my friends would tell me, oh, you'll never make money. You'll never be successful in this business. And I didn't listen to them. I don't know what. Again, there was a strength inside of me that I just didn't listen. And I did it anyhow. And when I and I and my story is that when I drove up in my Jaguar, they kind of looked at me like, oh, I guess she did it. And even there was a point that I, my mother would call me up and or I call my mom, how you doing, Arlene? I'd say, Oh, you know what, mom? You know, it's really hard. I'm doing this business. And she would say, Well. If you got a regular job as a secretary, you wouldn't have to worry. And you know what? I said to my mom, mom, if that's what you have to say, don't call me. Because I was so determined to do something with my life. And I didn't want to hear those messages. Because when I was younger and I went to see my mom and I told her I was so miserable in my marriage. And she said, but you have kids, you have to stay there. So those are the messages that when I talk to women, older women, we all say the same thing. Those are the messages you got. You have to stay in a marriage because you have kids. You have to be miserable and unhappy because you have kids. 
you know, my kids have, I, you know, God bless my daughters. They have a great career because I told them what I was never told. You can be anything you want. You can go anywhere in your life. You can have husbands, girlfriends, friends, whatever, but make something of yourself. No one ever told me that. So I told that to my daughters and I tell that to women now. It's like, here you are in your life. You've raised your children. You're at a point in your life. Who are you? Are, isn't there something inside that you've always wanted to do? And when they open up, yeah, you know what? I always want, what is stopping you? What is stopping you from moving ahead in your life and being that person that you always wanted to be that? You don't have to ask your husband for money. You can make your own money. You could do what you want instead of always answering to somebody, you know, like from your parents, well, what are you spending the money on? And from your, your husband or your spouse or whoever you're with, you know, what's the money being sent, spent for? And it's like, now we don't have to answer to anybody. I don't have to answer to anybody. I do what I want when I want. But my exploration of who I was was an interesting time because I started going to a... Um, I was going to get my manicure pedicure and the manicures, I said, Oh, my big toe is hurting me. She did this work on my toe and I'm like, it stopped hurting me. I'm like, well, what is that about? She said, well, I go to a healer. I said, well, I want to learn. So I started following the spiritual healer and I learned about universal energy and opening chakras. And from that, a friend said to me, Hey, you want to go to hypnotherapy school? I said, Oh, okay. I'll go do that. So here I am, 50, I probably was 60, going to hypnotherapy school at the same time doing this business. Then from hypnotherapy school, somebody said, oh, you want to learn neuro-linguistic programming, NLP? Okay, I'll learn that. So whenever there's something that came along that would help me learn more about who I was, that's when I would jump into something because it was so important. I'm always on this quest to find out who I am. Sometimes I think, okay, I got it, and then something comes along. And I'm still working on things. I mean, I'm working on with somebody to get on ClickFunnels to start a whole program. I'm doing my Amazing Women in Action because, Gina, as you know, we women have so many stories to tell, and, and we're not being heard enough. We need more stories out there, and we need role models. You know, who are our role models? Oprah Winfrey, God bless her. I mean, you know, she's an incredible woman. Who else is our role models? I mean, we can count on one hand the women out there that we look at as role models because they're famous, they're out there. I mean, look at Jane Fonda. Wow, talk about a role model and look at her whole life. But who are we? The I don't want to say ordinary because I think we're all extraordinary. We're not ordinary by any means. But who are we, the, the women that are living our life in our cities and with friends and family, how do we get to be that role model for everybody out for the people that we meet, for our daughters and our granddaughters and all the women in our life? So that to me is the, my biggest thing. And that's what my amazing women in action is about because I, you know, I'm starting this YouTube channel as soon as I learn all these things, because it's a whole learning process. But what your mindset is there, then you know you're going to do it. You can always ask somebody, how do I do this? How do I do that? But you have to be so positive in your mind and, 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 and say, you know, there's nothing going to stop me. Nobody's going to ever tell me I can't. I don't care what age I'm at because an age is just a number. It's only a number of my life. And it's funny because somebody put on, on Facebook, they said, when somebody says to you, oh, I want to be like you when I'm your age. Isn't that interesting? Why not be like me now? Why not be like me now? You have to wait till you're, um, you're, uh, you know, you're my age. Why not now? Why not make your time right now? When can you stand up for yourself and stand in your power and stand on who you are, who, who you know you've always wanted to be and have not done it? And it's important and all my life, I've been fighting for women's rights, all my life. I mean, even getting a job and after we left Africa in San Francisco, and the guy says to me, well, what's your junior high school remarks? And I'm like, what? Junior high school marks? I'm like, are you kidding me? I said, I'm a mother. And a I said, you're asking me, well, you have to do that. I looked at him. I said, can I have my application back? 
and I ripped it up in front of him and I said, I don't want to work here. Going for a job where somebody said, um, well, who's going to watch? Do you have children? Oh, yeah, I have two daughters. Well, who's going to watch your children while you're working? I'm like, excuse me? Do you ask men the same question? So I have been fighting for women's rights all my life, always standing up for women, even when they don't want to stand up for themselves. I'm always there to encourage, to help women, to see what their value is in life, to know that it doesn't matter how old you are, to have an attitude of, I can do anything I want to do. There is nothing and no one can stop me. And when you have that attitude in your brain, that journey is going to be incredible. It's so true. When we live a life of possibility, it doesn't mean that everything you go after will automatically come to you easily. You know, it's just that mindset you mentioned is so important because what we focus on grows. So if we tell ourselves we can't, we can't, we can't, our brain pretty much proves that over and over again. And therefore it seems like life is proving that over and over and over again. But when we really believe in our potential and let's be honest, Arlene, everybody has potential. Yes. Everybody can overcome what has happened to them. Now, not everybody will, and that's not a judgment. It's just a fact. Some people, for whatever reason, don't feel the need to make the changes to live a different life. And that's the journey they get to choose. That's what you're saying. You know, are you living the life you want to live? Are you feeling the feelings you want to feel? Are you having the kinds of relationships that you desire to have? All of those things are from intentionality. All of those things are from heading toward the things you want and saying no to the things you don't because there's a yes, no push pull in life as well. You said yes to everything that lined up with your ability to grow and move to the next level. Now my journey would be completely different. My yeses will be different. You know, there might be some convergence of our paths here and there, but we look to someone else to be reminded that there does not have to be a limit unless we choose to make agreement with that limit. And so I think that's the powerful part of your story is that it's like water going down a river. Every time there was a rock, the water flows around it, right? That is kind of life in a nutshell. When you came up against a rock, you just figured out how to flow around it. I think something that's been profound for me to remember is when you're setting your goals or your dreams for your life, that's what you hang on to. But how you get there, that's the more open-handed part of the journey. Like it's good to have a plan so that you have a general, this is what it's going to take to get there. But the actual nuts and bolts of the everyday, sometimes it doesn't turn out, quote, the way we planned it. But if we still get to the goal, you know, that's the important part. So how do we go with that flow, hang on to our vision, hit those, I guess, measurements or marks for ourselves, but you know what, being open to how it turns out in the process, because Life is a journey and not a destination, which is what you're sharing. You know, you did this thing, then you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to do this. And then you do that thing. You're like, well, this isn't working anymore. I, or I want something more. And I think that permission needs to come from ourselves because you mentioned very early on that we did what everyone else, especially like you're talking about your generation. There was a definite, definite mindset about men, women, the workplace, you know, I'm I'm a handful of generations behind you, so I'm a little less in that place. Still, it's a bit of a man's world, but I don't focus on that. And you didn't focus on that. And I, that's something I wanted to bring out. that it, There can be a cultural norm. There can be a cultural attitude, but I don't have to make agreement with it. It might be difficult, but why not push against the norm that's holding you back and see if there isn't another answer for you? To me, the biggest thing is to be brave and bold. Mm -hmm. Be brave and be bold and try it. Hey, if it's not perfect, you fix it. But the other thing is that we don't celebrate every little accomplishment that we make. Sometimes we look, we say, oh, well, I just did that. No, go out and buy yourself some flowers. Go and go to a movie. 
Go call up your friend. Hey, I just did something great. I want to go celebrate. Let's go to lunch. And we don't do that. And that really pumps you up. It pumps you up when you can go out and celebrate. You know, I was sitting here one night last week and I'm like, you know what? I'm getting the heck out of this house. I'm tired of sitting at my computer working away. I got up. I went and got myself. I love jigsaw puzzles. I'm a big jigsaw puzzle person. Went to Barnes and Noble, got a bunch of jigsaw puzzles. I walked out. I said, hey, the movies is right here. I wonder what's playing at the movies. I walked in the movies. What's playing now? Jumanji. Well, it's not my normal thing that I would go see, but you know what? I said, I don't care. I'm going to go sit in a movie. And it was like a silly movie to me, but there was these two young women laughing hysterical and it made it fun. So it's like just little things like that. I surround myself with inspiration. My daughter sent me a card, a greeting card, and I, I see it every day. I am strong because a strong woman raised me. You know, and truthfully, she never told me a lot of that. She never said that a lot about me. But when I got that card, I was like, oh, my God, really? You know, it was like it really made me feel so good about myself. And it's, I, so, it's so funny that you say that because this morning I woke up and I came to my computer and my date book because we had our appointment this morning, just checking my day before you and I started. And there was a card there from my daughter. Oh, that's funny. And it was the same gist. You know, she was basically just encouraging me that my example, my strength, the perseverance that you talked about. And I wanted to bring that point because here we are few generations, couple generations apart, both mothers, both forging paths that are different than everybody else in our family. Let's put it that way. We might be that one unicorn, right? It's like, everybody's like, you should slow down. And I'm with you. I'm like, no, I'm not, I shouldn't. I'm not dead. I'm, what am I slowing down for? Yeah. For what? So here's the thing. Somebody's watching and my podcast, this feminine roadmap podcast is us sharing our stories and the strategies and the things we've been through because somebody needs to hear that someone else has experienced that thing or had a version of it that sounds familiar to something you've been through so that we can build a community of women who say, yes, you can. And it's interesting because when I'm around young women, like in the thirties, for me, anybody thirties or forties is young twenties, but it's like uh, my grandkid, but you know, it's like, they're in the same place. They're in the same. It, it blows me away that we think in night to 2020 now that things have changed. They really haven't changed that much. And we need to be the women out there from our experience that are out there encouraging young women as well as older women. I mean, I talked to a woman, she said, well, I just, you know, I'm now, my kids are grown and here I am. And uh, I don't know what to do with my life. And I'm like, oh my God, girl, you are the perfect one I want to talk to. Because we're going to find out where that fire is. What did you ever want to do? Where was your, where, what, what things you love to do? You know, and it's also about having self-esteem. I spoke to a friend last night and, and she and I are going to talk about projects that we're working on. And she said, Arlene, I want you to, look in the mirror every day and look at your body and be happy with your body. And I'm like, I do that. I do that. I know it's not perfect, but it's perfect for me. It's who I am at the moment. Okay. So 20 pounds would make me feel happier if I lost that, you know, but it's like, you know, this is who I am and I need to celebrate my body. I'm healthy. I take very good care of myself. You know, uh, um, every day I write in my journal before I go to bed, I'm grateful to be alive and to be healthy. I write that every day in my journal. I'm grateful to be alive and to be healthy. I have two sisters that are in their 70s, and all the people around us growing up are gone. Mm -hmm. We, as a we say the Krantz sisters, man, there's a lot of strength in us because we're still out there hanging in there. And we're being, you know, and to be role models for people, wherever I go, when, you know, people know me and they say, Arlene, you know, so proud of what you do. And I want to be like you again. There's that thing. I want to be like you when I grow up and you're so strong and this and that. And it makes me feel good that people can look at me like that. And why wouldn't I want that? Especially growing up 
with somebody saying you can't have anything. You can't have what you want. You and know? what if that person telling you that is you? Yeah, well, then the story goes in our brain. Like I was told I was a terrible writer. Somebody said, oh, you can't write. Your writing's terrible. I'm like, oh, well, then I guess I'm not a writer. So every time I would write, I would like, oh, I'm a terrible writer. I didn't want to write. It's like, who am I to think I'm a writer? I was told I was a lousy writer. That message from when I was a teenager stayed in my brain for years until I sat down and wrote a book. And I'm like, oh my God, I wrote a book. I can't believe I was so proud of myself that I wrote a book. It's on Amazon. Yay. You know, that was an accomplishment for me. So it's those little things that we put in front of us, those old messages that we, that somehow they just stay there, don't they? Mm -hmm. And every once in a while they come up and you have to say, you know what? Thank you for showing your face, but I choose not to listen to you. I choose not to listen to that old message anymore. And that's why I believe that doing mantras, saying I'm a strong, powerful woman every single day. When you wake up, you say it. When you go to bed, you say it. All that goes into your subconscious and that mind that has all those messages and doesn't know any different. All it knows is what it hears. So when some question comes up, that old message will pop up again. And then it's like, oh, here comes that message again. I can't. Jeez, if I thought I couldn't, I don't know what my life would be like. I can't even imagine what my life would have been like if I didn't pay attention to, to wanting more, to pay attention, to listen to myself, to be willing and brave and bold to step into something that was brand new that I didn't know. Even getting a job, I didn't know. But I said, sure, I could do it. And I was great at it. They loved me. You learn as you go along. You don't have to know everything. You have to know enough to get started and the rest will fall into place. And if it doesn't, you learn. Every time I listen to somebody that runs multi-billion dollar corporations and people that are so successful and they all say the same thing. Listen, it wasn't perfect. I made mistake after mistake after mistake. And that was one of the things that inspiration that I would put up next to me. How many times did Edison try to invent the light bulb until he scored? How many times did, how many times do you wonder would Steve Jobs try to create a computer and failed so many times? How many times did all these different people try? At least they try. Try. You have to at least try. You have to at least give yourself a chance and say, I could do it. Yeah, because if we don't try, we won't know. In other words, if I don't try, then what I've said about myself is true. Like if I say I can't, and then I don't try, the I can't is true. The only time that I can make that story different is by doing something different, by trying something different. And we don't have to be a different person. I think I want to bring that out. People feel like, oh, I'm not, quote, that kind of person, right? Maybe they've always been that quiet woman who's always taken the back seat, doesn't put herself first, doesn't take care of herself in the way that she should. It doesn't have to be a podcast, a YouTube channel, writing a book. It can be anything that a woman has in her heart to do. It could be learning to quilt. It could be learning to cook. It could be starting a a women's group in your community talking about your favorite hobby, whatever it is. Like it doesn't have to be the thing that quote can make you famous or is so public like what you and I do. I think the point of the conversation is what is the thing you want to do? Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter how many people are going to see that thing, but what would fill your cup and make you feel like your life is vibrant and that you're contributing and that you're growing and that you're not just letting life pass you by. And so I think for a lot of women, a journaling activity of who am I, what do I love to do, what's something I would love to do, even if no one else in the world ever saw it, heard it, or whatever, what's the very first thing that you think, well, I always thought it would be fun to learn to sing, or play the piano, or decorate, recover a chair, like literally, I want women to think 
because you and I are on the same kind of track and personality and the things that we're pursuing. It's very public. It's very, you know, using our voice. But I want women to understand that you, the permission, if you need it, Arlene and I give you full permission right now to live your life however you want to live it. But it needs to be authentic to you. And yeah. it doesn't have a qualifier of what's worthy and what's not worthy. It's whatever it is that lights your fire. Exactly. It's not, and it's interesting because, I mean, I, when you when it's talked about that, I remember when my kids were little, and again, we didn't have much money, and I had to decorate the room. So I had I went and got decorating books. I'm like, oh, taking little pom-poms, putting around the lampshade, matching colors up, just having fun and accomplishing something. And, I'm, and I don't have much of an artistic ability i'm not i there's a part of me i wish i was an artist but never's happened i tried my best not not me i thought i was good but no one else did but whatever but it's uh but my art is something different my art is helping women make money and create their businesses and step into their power but there's so many things that and it's true there's like you know sometimes she's i wish like i want to take an acting class you know one day i woke up years ago and said they have the New York Film Academy. I'm going to go do that. Now, I know I'm not a filmmaker, but I wanted to experience it. So how many things out there to even experience to say, wow, I always wanted to try that. Am I brave enough to go do that? And there's so many night classes you can take and so many places you can go to learn new things that would spark, you know, bring some spark into your life. And that's yours. That is yours that you did for yourself without asking permission from anybody else, actually giving yourself permission to do it. Mm -hmm. Giving yourself permission to say, you know what? I always wanted to take it. My friend is taking it. My sister, who was a teacher, all of a sudden she's became an artist. She's taking art classes and she's loving it. She does it for herself. She doesn't do it for anybody else. And I can't believe how good she is. It's like she had this thing inside of her to go do art. And she's 74. And that is what we're talking about. The age is just a number. The gift, the talent, the desire, the ability, just, you don't even have to be good at it. But if you want to try, I have a true story. We used to have Korean students that would come to our home. I had some friends who were Korean that lived next door to us when the kids were really little. And when they were here going to school, we got to know them. When they went back to Korea and we bought a house, they said, hey, can we send a couple of girls to you to learn English? So basically anywhere from two weeks to six weeks, we did it seven or eight times. The, one of the last girls we had were sisters and they wanted to learn to knit. And I did not know how to knit. So I thought, well, how hard can it be, right? So I literally learned to knit enough to teach her to knit. Now, the end of that story is she did great. I got halfway into a scarf. They went back to Korea, and that scarf is still on the knitting needles. <laughs> it's not done. I have no idea. I don't remember how to do it. I wouldn't even know what count I was on. But the point is, for that moment, that six weeks that they were here, maybe four of them, I was learning and teaching something I had never in my life done. And for that four weeks, great. That scarf is unfinished. Who cares? The point was not for me to end up with a scarf. The point was for me to learn so I could help someone else learn. And I enjoyed that process. So I think sometimes we think so concrete, right? Mm -hmm. You either have to, it has to produce money or it has to produce this effect or this effect. No, literally learn to knit just long enough to teach someone else to knit. And she probably doesn't even <laughs> knit anymore either, but it was just the thing to do with that moment. I enjoyed it. So I think maybe we could be more broad in the thought process. I had to learn to sew. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm like, I'm not that kind of person. But again, we didn't have much money and I had to make my kids clothes. And then I made some, I made my sister got married and I made my, my daughters, the little flower girl dresses that were falling apart halfway through the wedding. But I did it. I challenged myself and I did it. So there's so many things we can do. You know, a, a poetry. My mother used to sit in my poems. I can't believe my mother wrote poems. You know, and, and I don't do that, but she would show me what she was doing. And also 
I was a big reader of biographies and autobiographies when I was a kid. And I, it's funny because I just thought of that by doing this talking with you, how that influenced me in my life by reading biographies and autobiographies about people that took something in their life and made something, took something they wanted to do and made something out of themselves. You know, and it's, uh, I know there's that's a, a great way to get a virtual mentor. Cause I've done all, I've had several virtual mentors of people that I've never actually met, but they write books or they put something out in the world that I can consume and learn from them. And when you choose a couple of voices, this is such a good point, Arlene. When you choose a couple of voices, whether it's this podcast and my guest, or it's a book, or it's a YouTube channel of someone you admire, it could be Oprah. It could be someone no one knows, but you click with. Like you find them randomly at a podcast or a YouTube channel. Just kind of develop a, quote, relationship with them and figure out when they when they speak your language, right? When it goes into your ears and your spirit says, Yes. Yes. That's how I feel. Give yourself the gift of a few minutes a day, five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes to spend time building that relationship, if you will, with yourself, with that virtual mentor. Get a journal. Figure out the way to take that, that information, assimilate it, and make it a part of who you are. Because we live in an age where we have access to all the information. It's it's not that hard. So anything you want to learn, when people say YouTube it, they're not kidding. I have YouTube some things. And I'm surprised. Everything is actually out there. So what is it that you want to do? If it's for like you said, you made a dress. It was for a wedding. Did you become a fashion designer? No. But did you learn something new and about yourself and about the situation? Yeah. It's like me in the knitting. Well, that every time I look at that, I kind of laugh. I think well. I don't want to knit anymore. So I don't have to give ourselves permission to try. If we don't like it, it's okay. You don't have to like nail everything and continue everything you learn. I think that's something I wanted to say, because your story really is about try this. Nope. Try that. Nope. Try that. Maybe you do it for five years. You love it. And then one day you realize, no, I don't want to do this anymore. And that's, that's okay. Yeah. I mean, I went, I, I'm not a swimmer. And there's somebody advertised that they teach older people how to not be afraid of water. And I'm like, I'm going to go do that. So I went and learned swimming. And he said to me, look, you're in good shape. You could probably win races for your age. But then I went to a big pool and someone touched me and I sank. I said, no, I'm not doing that anymore. But I went and I tried it. I said, at least I gave it a chance. You know, I learned some things from it. But, you know, it's like you have, if you don't try, then you stay in that same place of beating yourself up, beating yourself. You just have to try. It's not going to be perfect the first time. It's going to be far from perfect. And if you like it and you continue, you'll get better at it. It's like doing podcasts, doing interviews. The more we do them, the better we get at them. You know, the first more natural it feels. The more natural it feels. And that's with anything. I go to my dentist and she's sitting in there knitting between working on people and she loves it. She makes socks. I said, why don't you make socks for all those poor kangaroos in Australia? She says, Oh, you know, I'm going to check on that. You know, why don't you, you know, there's so many, you know, we have a friend Aldana who went to Africa on a trip and now is helping these women in these little villages sell their work that they're doing the bead work and their jewelry and everything. And, you know, she found a mission. She found something that was, Bigger than herself, I have to say. I have to say she's an incredible woman. So here's these women in Africa doing what they do. Someone comes from America, catches the vision, pays them a fair price, a fair trade price for their craft, brings it to America, sells it here and puts that goes back to Africa and puts the money back into their businesses. She's helping women. She went from one to two women to like nine to ten women who are changing their lives because they're brave enough to build the relationship with a woman from America who says, I'm going to build a nonprofit so that you can have an independent life in a country that doesn't give women independence. You know, they're, 
we live in a place, Arlene, if you are anywhere in a first world country, we have no excuse not to go after the things that we want to go after. We have everything at our fingertips. We are not living in a slum in Kitali, Kenya, and God brings a woman in who changes your life. We have access to people, things, money, internet, books, libraries. You know, we have no excuse. And I think sometimes we forget how many resources are at our disposal. We really have no excuse. Now, I want to send a little caveat just in case. If somebody's perfectly happy, not going after anything else, this is not a judgment if you're not that person. But if you are that person who's got that niggling idea, that sense of, ah, just there's something else. And I'm, I'm, it's not, it's not like discontentment, but almost like dissatisfaction. Like I just, this isn't quite the way I wanted my life to turn out. Then you're the person we're talking to. Yeah. Yeah. And you have, and sometimes like when I talk to women and we talk about, you know, what they want to do, I say, go to a place like a park by the ocean, sit there with a, a journal, no computer, no talking in it and just write, 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 write. No dotting the I's, crossing the T's, nothing. Just write whatever comes out of your heart. You know, no phones. Keep the phones. Leave them home. Keep them in your purse or in the car if you have to take a car. But do something like that so that you can look and go back and read that and go, wow, this is what came out. You know, maybe I should see where that sh- I could go with that. You never know. That's a powerful resource, really, Arlene, I have found over the years, is getting my thoughts out. I think we really need to give ourselves permission without judgment to write things down. Like, it's not going to get graded. That's your journal. Those are your thoughts. And sometimes getting the thoughts out of your head, I'm going to say most times, the clarity is behind that process. We have too much going on in our head. We need to dump it out somewhere and then look at it because now it's a thing, right? We've put words down. The words are the things we can kind of go, oh, like you said, oh, now there's two ways that works for me. I think when I write some things down, I realize, oh, I just needed to kind of vomit on paper because my attitude sucked, right? right? <laughs> like it's not necessarily true. It was true in the moment, but I vomited it out. And now I can look at it and go, wow, Gina, you might need a minute because that was ridiculous, right? But then there's the other side that you're talking about where get through all that emotion, get through all of the, the no, get through all of the resistance and really look at yourself on paper and go, these are my heart's desires. It's from your soul. What's deep inside your soul? That soul place. That, that place that we don't acknowledge, we don't, we're so much in our head that we don't pay attention to our heart and our soul. What's that part of you that tells you it's not the right thing to do and you do it anyhow because that's what's expected of you? Mm. Your gut feeling, that gut feeling, geez, you know, I need to go do this. That gut feeling says, you know what, this is not right for me. And you say yes anyhow. That learning to say no, oh my God, that's like the biggest thing. To learn to say no. Hey, Arlene, can you just, you know what? My friend wanted to come and stay with me for a couple months because she was called, she had a job down here. And I said, honey, after a couple of days, I'm not going to like you. And I love you more. And I, I love our friendship. I don't want to lose that. And how many people would say yes? Oh, because I, how can I say no? So that's another thing that we as women, we need to learn to say no and set boundaries around ourselves. It's a part of our growth. Every day I grow, every day I learn something new, every day I add another year to my number, and every day I'm proud of everything I accomplished. That's such a good point that we didn't touch back on, which is celebrating those wins. And wins don't have to be the big thing. I was recently listening to one of my virtual mentors talking about everything each day Find something that you did that you can celebrate because you're not going to enjoy the big accomplishment without appreciating the little wins along the way. It's a momentum building experience. So I'll be happy when is a lie. 
that phrase, I'll be happy when, is a complete lie. If you can't find the joy in this journey in the day to day, including the sorrows and the losses, I'm not saying it's always happy, but we can always find the win, the joy, the, dude, I got out of bed today. That was a win. <laughs> or I took a shower and got dressed. Yay me. Some days, that's a win. Some days I don't want to get out of bed either. It's like, really, do I have to get out of what really do I have to go do work today? And then I'm like, Arnie, just get your butt out of bed and go do what you need to do today. And, and if it, and you know, plan something for tonight. I'm going out to a, a networking group with women tonight. I said, okay, I'm going to go do that. You and know? that is a way of rewarding yourself, right? Because it brings you joy for yeah. some people. It brings you joy to be in nature. For some people, they love the city. For some people, they love music. For some people, they love books. You know, I can't tell you how many women like, oh, I used to read books or I used to, you know, dance or I used to whatever. And I saw an ad and this woman was a dancer. And when she was young, an injury stopped her. And then in her really late years, I want to say she was probably in her nineties before something came along, acupressure that freed her up to be able to move again. She went right back to dance. Wow. Because that is her soul. That is the joy. That's her juice, you know? And I think we can find our juice and, and do it and not judge. Oh my gosh. We are so hard on ourselves. Yeah, that's true. We beat us, you know, let's whip ourselves every day for what we, what we're not doing and what we're struggling with. But again, the celebration is important. Every day you do something like, I'm so happy I did this today. I, I got this interview with you today, this conversation. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to celebrate that because I'm, I'm proud of myself that I'm doing this with you. you and know? it took courage to do it. Yeah, to, tell, to say that my age took courage, let me tell you. <laughs> That was a big one. But, you know, it's like we have to acknowledge who we are and have self-esteem about who we are. Again, it's, to me, it goes back to that just being bold and brave and realizing it's never, there is no perfection. Every time you're going for perfection, you're never going to get it. There is no perfection. Mm. You know, that's right. a big thing. And everybody expects, oh, it has to be perfect before I can do it. And then you miss out. Because you're always looking for that perfection, but you never get there. So start with not being perfect and to move on. And as you go, it starts to get better and better and better and better. And maybe we'll be the perfect place for where you want it to be. And there it is. The word perfect has a different definition at that point. Perfect has a different definition. Definitely. It starts with progress. progress. Like just progress over perfection. You and I were talking before we hit record that. I started a YouTube channel just in this last November because I wanted to have these conversations with these people. I was finding amazing people that didn't quite fit my podcast demographic, but I was like, but I want to talk to these people and I want to help share their message. So I've just literally pulled the trigger and I don't do anything fancy, but you know what? If you have something that you're called to do, it's going to resonate. And not only is it going to resonate with you, but it'll resonate with someone else. There's like confirmation in the world, right? There's a way of knowing this, this is my thing. This is it. It yeah. is a feeling. I don't know how to explain the feeling, but you're like, yep, this is it. Yeah. I mean, I talk with people, with women, all my friends, and we're all like, oh yeah, I'm going through the same thing. What are you doing about it? Well, I'm doing this. Oh, that's a great idea. I'm going to try that too. Or somebody can say, well, Arlene, you know. How are you doing this? I'm like, well, this is what, what, you know, I'm doing. Like I asked you about YouTube channel because I'm going to be starting my YouTube channel with my amazing women in action. And it's like, okay, I don't know how to do it, but I'm going to ask. And sometimes that, and that's a good point. We have to learn to ask for help. Mm -hmm. we, it's, we can't do it all ourselves. We really cannot do it alone. It's a lonely journey as it is to be an entrepreneur, but you got to reach out and you got to get the help when you need it. My not doing that has stopped me in different times of my life by not asking for help. And when I finally learned to open up and ask for the help I needed, wow, I took off. 
because I, it's, you can't do it alone. You know, when, when you learn to walk, somebody's there holding your hand, helping, picking you up to learn to walk. When you're in school learning, the teacher is there helping you. And they you know, when you go to them, I don't understand this. Can you help me? So all our life, we've asked for help. But for some reason, when we become adults, all of a sudden we think we don't need to ask for help. But guess what? We need to ask for help. And if well, like we should know this, like, why should we know everything? That's, that's ridiculous. We know everything. And that's, and that's another good point about, we think we have to know it all and we don't know it all. And even the people in my experience that I come across as know-it-alls, they don't know it all. <laughs> they may know less because yeah. they think they know it all. I mean, I never went to college. So I always had this thing that I was not smart. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a college degree. And that's not true. I am very smart. I don't have school smarts, but I got tons of street smarts. Yes, yes. So it's a different kind of smart. So I had, to, I had to learn to accept, I'm smart. I have to acknowledge that in me, which I wasn't doing. Mm. I always there, thought everybody was smarter, and that's not true. That is such a big part of the journey, is that really capturing our own stories and challenging them. But... We have already wrapped a whole hour, wow. you and I. Tell me, if you had to give three pieces of information from your 80 years of living, if a woman is just kind of stuck in a place or really feeling like that, you know, that push in your spirit, like, oh, she's saying something I need to listen to. What three things would you plant in that, that person's heart right now to give them the courage, the bravery? to take the step toward whatever it is that's calling her name? I think the first thing is that you really have to acknowledge it. Acknowledge what's inside of you that wants to come out. Pay attention to it. Instead of having a mess something and you push it aside, bring it out. Bring out what you really have inside of you that wants to come out. And to open up that door to allow that to come out so that you can move on to what you need to do next. For me, it's always been about not listening to negative. Surround yourself with positive people. If they're negative, they don't belong in your life. If, you're, if they're negative and family, cut the conversation short. You know, you don't need to talk to somebody every day of the week that's negative with you. Take, get rid of that negativity because that's what holds you down. All those things, are you, like, like what tried to hold me down. You can't, who do you think you are? And I had the strength to fight against that. And you need to do that as well to really keep that negativity away from you. That's so important to do. And to, and to realize, I always go back to being brave and bold because I believe that's one of the biggest things, to be brave enough to go start that journey to what you, what your goal is and what you want to accomplish in your life. Start with little steps. It doesn't have to be a whole big thing. Start with little steps. You know, take one little, like there's a book called The One Thing. Do one thing a day that will get you towards your goal. I was talking to somebody about it. They said, if you did one thing a day, that would be what, 365 days out of the year? You've done 365 things? I'm like, whoa. I never thought of it that way. So it's like, do the one, doesn't have to start big. Start small, get comfortable with it. Get comfortable with where you want to go. And if every step to go, oh, wow, I did that. Now it's time for me to take my next step. What do I need to do next? I'm working with somebody on mind maps. I don't know if anybody knows about that on the podcast, but explore that. That's an interesting thing. I'm going to start trying it for myself. So mind maps are interesting because from one thought comes another thought, and from another thought, oh, and another thing, carry around a little book with you. It doesn't have to be big. It can be a four by six, just a little notepad. Keep it in your purse. And every time something comes up, write it down. Or if you're not a writer and you don't want to do that, carry a little tape recorder or even your phone. You can record. Just write, down, write or record something that comes up. That used to happen to me when I was walking my dogs. Every time I walked the dog, all these ideas would pop in my head. Like, oh my God, by the time I got back, I forgot it because I didn't write it down. So I learned to carry a notepad. Ah, that's a great idea. So we have 
Acknowledge what's inside of you. Open that door. Surround yourself with positive people. Be brave and bold. Take the journey. You yeah. said to, you know, get comfortable with it, which means it's going to be uncomfortable because it's new and that's okay. So just yeah. get to yes and comfort. And when you get to comfort, go to the next level of discomfort to get to yeah. the next level of comfort and then carry around a notepad for ideas. Yeah. And also I believe you should surround yourself with positive sayings like I have on my wall all over the place. You know, positive. So when I look at that thing from my daughter, I'm strong because I'm a strong woman, raised me. I'm like, okay, that made me feel good. What do I need to do? So. Remind yourself exactly your environment. Well, Arlene, thank you so much for spending this time with me today. I fully appreciate your time, your energy, your passion. It's very inspiring. Well, thank you so much. It was all my pleasure, I have to say. Awesome. Well, today I've been speaking with Arlene Krantz. She's a businesswoman, an author, soon to be a YouTube creator. She's written the book, The Business Within You. If you head over to www.feminineroadmap.com forward slash episode 145, I'm going to have links to Arlene, her two websites, her book. You can find her, connect with her, watch for her YouTube channel. Also, while you're at the website, please leave your name and email address. Become a part of my tribe. I have a gift for you. I don't spam. As a matter of fact, I'm not nearly as consistent as I should be, but occasionally I do send out encouraging emails, letting you know what's going on. And wherever you listen to this podcast, please subscribe, rate, and share. There are so many women who need to hear this message. They need to know that yes, they can. Yes, they can. Start today, start small, be bold, be brave, don't worry about the end. Just get started. It's all about the journey. The destination comes if you start taking the journey. So my friends, thank you so much for starting the journey by listening to Arlene and my conversation today. I trust that you've been encouraged, that there's something stirring in your spirit. Answer it. Answer it yes, and let us know how it goes. I look forward to sharing more and more inspiring people, strategies, and conversations with you. Until the next time we talk, my friends, have a great week. Take care. Bye-bye.